Oh, I thought it was funny. We were in the car the other day, Case, and uh, and David was going to maybe go to Las Vegas. And the last minute, his friend called and was like, hey, I got a private jet. And David was like, oh, okay, let's go. So he calls Natalie and he's like, <laughs> he's like good news. We don't have to fly, you know, regular. We're going to go on a private jet. And Natalie just goes, oh, okay, great. And I just never heard anyone <laughs> so not excited about so going unenthused on a, about private a private jet. jet. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? Well, it wasn't that. It was just the fact that I knew that. Now like, you have to shit, go to Vegas. Now I have to go to Vegas. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. It was like now that there's no excuse. Oh, oh, oh. You can't and, pass up a private jet. And the jet. cherry on the cake was that we were going to Vegas at 11 and leaving at 3 a.m. Mm. So we were there for literally two yeah, hours. Bro, that's so oh. fucking. Our, yeah. our friend Dylan Francis is a DJ and sometimes he invites us to his shows. And so his private jet took off at 11. And the crazy thing about private jet is you can literally go, hey, I have extra room. You want to come? And it's so easy to board a private jet. Yeah. You don't need an ID. You no can one... get there five minutes late. Yeah. You and can... the plane will wait for you. And the plane will wait for you. <laughs> no, but. It, it's interesting because he his job is so bizarre because he lands in Vegas at like 11.45 at night, like midnight, and he goes on at 1 a.m. and he DJs till 3 a.m. And then at 3.45, he's back on the flight and he's home at 5 a.m. So at a time when you're, you're probably going to bed at 10, <laughs> Dylan is packing to get on his flight. Just going to work. And he'll be back before you wake up. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Like, that's such an odd what job What about the fact me. that his commute is in a Gulf Stream? Yeah. <laughs> It's That's fucking madness. sick. Yeah, Casey got a private jet the other day because uh, just there was a scheduling conflict and he needed to get one. And he got the entire private jet to himself and th- there was no one to fly with him. So he asked my high school teacher and he was like, you want to come to LA with me? I have like nine seats left on this jet. And my high school teacher was like, uh, okay, I guess. Yeah, I'll call off work. And <laughs> which is really funny. So my high school teacher spent a week in LA because Casey had room on his private jet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the whole story is I had like a, I had a work thing in LA that I had to make it back for. And my fee for the work thing was the same exact price as the private jet. So I made no money, but I fulfilled all my obligations. And I got to give your high school teacher a ride. What's the craziest thing that's happened to you with like work or like, like I showed up in Dubai, they had this for me, this happened. And then they gave me a hundred thousand dollar headphones. You know, know (laughs) I mean, the craziest thing, like I've always been really obsessed with flying on airplanes. Like my dream when I was a little kid was to someday fly in first class. Yeah. And like my, my financial goal in life, I have one singular financial goal in life, mm. and that's to never have to fly coach again. <laughs> and I'm not there yet. And I don't know what that looks like or what it means, but like ever since I was a kid, I've always been obsessed with planes. And like the idea of first class just seems so wild. Yeah. And I was just in the Middle East and I was there with Etihad, which is like one of those fancy Middle Eastern airlines. And they flew me back and they have one seat on their gigantic plane, like the double-decker A380. And that seat is called the residence. And this seat, no shit, like dead ass, (laughs) the seat is three rooms. You have a living room with two couches in it. You have a hallway that takes you to your bedroom. Wow. And the bedroom has like a bed in it that two people could comfortably sleep in. You could definitely, if you're there with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, you could definitely sleep with someone in there. There's a lock on the door. There's no way anyone could see in. And then the third room is a private bathroom. You don't share your bathroom with anyone on the plane. You have your own bathroom. In that bathroom. How many people fly on this plane at once? You know, like 400 or whatever, but there's only one of these. (laughs) You see what I'm saying? Oh, I see. So for everybody else on the plane, it's regular. And then for one person. And you were in the seat. I had it for one way. The other way I like. How many hours was the trip? 14 and a half. There is one fucking. There's hundreds of people sitting in middle seat. And, and on the same, just beneath me. And the shitty thing is, there's like a dozen of them could have come up into my room and hung yeah. out with me. <laughs> and they would have been way more comfortable. I had a shower with 10 minutes of running hot water with a timer on it so I know when I'm running out. I split it up into three different showers. Because <laughs> I took a shower before my nap, after my nap, and then before I landed. They gave me a bathrobe. Oh That's my fucking God. crazy. They gave me a menu that What's was What's the price four... on that? So I looked it up when I got back. Yeah. And it was like $26,000 for one way. <laughs> wow. Just to add to the whole wealth thing, there's a thing called the black card. Basically, you have to be invited. What happens? You have to be invited to have this card. And it's like a titanium card. It's like pretty. Yeah, it's like the, it's like the black card that Jay-Z raps about. I remember the first time I saw one. Yeah. I was like 25 years old. And I was in New York City. And I was having dinner with some fancy people. And like I just saw it like land on the table. And I was like... I didn't even know they were real. I thought they were like unicorns, mm. leprechauns, and the Amex black card. <laughs> it, and then like I saw it and I was like really embarrassed. And like I asked my friend, I was like, Can I can I ask him if I can touch that? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like this heavy weapon. Yeah, it's very of a credit heavy. Card. Yeah. And there's no way to like apply for it or get it. 
Yeah, and and you were lucky to get invited to to have one. And how did it like? What was the packaging it came in when it arrived at your door? <laughs> the only reason why I have one is a friend of mine's like friends with the head of AMX and like hooked it up for me. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but when it comes, it comes in a box that's enormous, <laughs> like huge. How big? You know, it's probably like it's like two shoe boxes. Wow, for a credit card. For a credit card, and then a human being delivers it to you. My first one, a human delivered it. Wow. He was like, Mr. Neistat. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I'm here with your Centurion card. And I was like, are you a courier? And he's like, I work for American Express. And I was like, Pow! head We're going to need a sample of your blood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and what are the perks with it? You were, you were listing some perks off. There's some pretty silly perks. But if you travel a lot, it's like you can definitely get benefits. But it's like when you check into a hotel, they immediately give you like one of the best rooms they have, even if you pay for They it upgrade cheaper. you. Immediately, like two upgrades, two levels of upgrade. Like guarantee you instead of having to check out at eleven AM, like check out at four PM. So you get like an extra half day in your hotel room. That's fucked. With hotel or with airplanes, like if you oh. buy one business class ticket, you get one for free. What? Isn't there an um, Amex card too where it's like I I want uh an AK forty seven and a, yeah. a bucket of chicken wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'll bring you, it like you right just call now. Call the concierge and they'll do Is that it. the and, black and, card? And, yeah. and they'll bring it to your hotel room? Yeah, whatever you need. They'll do anything for you. Like it also comes with um Something called helicopter. This is so silly. Helicopter evacuation insurance. So if you're in a foreign country or somewhere where you can't get good medical care, they'll just send a helicopter in to pick you up and fly you to a near city to, where you can get the medical care you need. And that's like a free. That's like. Hey, guys. My name's Jeff. Big fan of the podcast. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are talking about the, the black card. And one time I was actually, this is uh, prior to the Vlog Squad days, I was at a party. I was going into a, a, a club in Vegas. You know how the pool parties, they get just mobbed. So yeah. it was really hard to get into. And this guy, he dropped his black card on the floor, like in front of the hostess, because you couldn't even get their attention to get like a table reservation. And this guy just drops it out and he's like, whoops. And you just saw the black card fall on the floor. And then it, it worked. His plan worked. He got everybody's attention and they oh, got wow. him in. From the black card, the power of the black card. Just, just from flinging it on the floor and be, going, whoops. Because you have to like, the, uh, to, uh, to get the black card other than, you, I mean, you know somebody, but you have to be spending like... What is it, like a million dollars a year? It's something insane. What is it, Dima? So uh, I looked it up. So you have to have an Amex card for a year. You have to spend four hundred to 650000 just in general. My ex-wife can apply for it. Yeah. And you have to have a million income grossly. How many Instagram followers? <laughs> it says uh, you need 15000 uh, I'm good. I actually have a VIP card at one of my banks that I go to, and uh, I get a dollar off every product that has lasagna in it. Oh, it's kind of like an Amex Black. Yeah, it's similar. But just for pasta? No, just anything that has lasagna. Not well, all pasta, only lasagna. Oh, Dima, this isn't time to brag. Yeah, but I just wanted to feel like I was part of the group. <laughs> I would bet that if we could go into the underbelly of Amex that I'm the poorest person. Yeah, to Casey have told me about card. Amex and he called. Uh, I, got, I got so jealous. I'm like, Casey, call him right now. Call that number on the back of your phone and see if I can get it. And they're like, oh, we don't know if we can do this, sir. Just, and Casey was hyping me up. <laughs> Casey was, was like, like, dude, it's a big deal. This Casey video's was like, really I, funny. Casey was like, I'm sitting next to one of the most popular humans on the face of the earth. <laughs> 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 this is the, the most interesting thing about YouTubers is they're, I say this all the time, they're the most relevant, irrelevant people in the world. That's true. There's not a per, there's not a per person or group of people that are so loved by so many people but also completely unknown to others nope you're like exactly no one, right no one has a stronger love for a person than than people that watch youtubers but then the rest of the world's kind of just like confused about them like that time in miami when we were trying to get in the club and <laughs> i told the guy this guy yeah. was like this party's been here 15 years puff daddy comes here and i was like well this is David Dobrik. I showed his Instagram. I was like, look, you Dude, know, verified. Look, looking Jeff did that. I got so fucking I was embarrassed, embarrassed of it, but it's a different town. It's not LA. It's like, you know, sometimes Dude, you have to show Jeff these things. when Jeff did that, I literally grabbed Natalie by the arm and I go, did he just fucking do what I think he did? <laughs> yeah, okay, but I only did it because he yeah. told me Puff Daddy. Now, Puff Daddy, huge star, but, <laughs> you know, you guys, P. Diddy, you may know him as, but... You look at his Instagram, he's only getting maybe I know I hate that to go into the likes. No, listen, listen. But. I didn't I didn't hear him saying this. I didn't hear him like hyping me up. All I saw was I'm like, okay, Jeff's talking to the bouncer, maybe he'll handle it because he's from Miami, so maybe he'll talk to him. <laughs> I could have showed my own Instagram. I'm doing pretty okay. But he said P. Diddy and he compared him to you. <laughs> and he's P. Diddy is not as relevant as you right now. Nowhere near. He, yeah, sure. he ran the fucking marathon and he's done all that stuff a while ago, but that's the last stuff he really did. He's yeah, in his fifties now. But it's just a completely different thing. Uh, you t me and P. Diddy are completely different people. 
Like Insta- you're right, he would have got he would have paid for the table. Yeah. He wouldn't have tried to sneak in. <laughs> We're over there trying to just fucking sneak in with. And, and, and he has and a granted, black card. He could have used that. Granted, when we go into clubs, we, we roll thirty guys deep, like at least. Yeah, yeah. He like it, a it's, lot of dudes. it's thirty and dudes me. and Natalie <laughs> and Jason. <laughs> thirty dudes and Natalie. It's, I'm the hard sell. Yeah. Natalie gets in no problem. I got so scared when when Jeff whipped out his Instagram. I was like. I was like, he's fucking, remember, Jason, you were there, right? Yeah. I was like, that guy's reckless. He's reckless. <laughs> and Jeff's like, I, I, Jason was like, yeah, I mean, that's how Jeff is sometimes. Like, you know, he's still got the Miami in him. And I was like, <laughs> I was so terrified. Like, I hate, dude, I hate when I'm standing like at a party and I can't get in. And it's so crazy because you can tell how much people love YouTubers because I'll be standing outside a party. One kid will walk up to me and be like, you can't get in? Are you fucking kidding me? You can't get into this party? What? Do they not know who you fucking are? And I literally have to go, I'll go, dude, please come down. Like you're, <laughs> you're, you're the only one here that feels like this. Like I, I promise you. <laughs> and then, and then you'll, and then you'll always have that guy like be like, dude, no worries. I got you. And he'll walk up to the bouncer and he'll be like, that guy right there. Do you know who he is? Yeah. The bouncer will look at me and he'll go, no. <laughs> and then the guy will be like, that's David Dobrik. <laughs> He's one of the biggest YouTubers right now. <laughs> and the bouncer will be like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I've I'm, seen that happen. Yeah, and then I'm never allowed wherever we are. That is, my, that is like the scariest moment. Yeah. And every time we go to a party and someone like starts screaming like, oh, it's David over. I have to go, please, please, please be quiet. You're going to ruin my chances of getting in. <laughs> or you're just, just like, Let me just try to just sneak in behind somebody because it's so tricky. In fairness, the reality of what you're the crew, what we're all like, or you guys are all like, it's like, Eight bros standing outside. We're the worst dressed anywhere. All I think is that strip club we were at in Miami where it's like filled with the most beautiful dancers, like dudes all wearing suits. And then there's eight of us surrounded by a guy who has no socks on and he's showing us his six toes. We are the worst dressed. The most exciting thing in that club were the six toes. We're just staring at some (laughs) dude's fucking foot. (laughs) 